Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create a three-way sanitary valve in Revit. This is going to be a four-part series. Today we're going to focus on part one, the skeleton. So based on the cut sheet, we're going to set up some reference planes so that we can flex our part properly based on the different dimensions that we have. And then on part two and part three, we're going to create the skin and then the connectors on part four. So what we're going to end up with is something pretty much like that. And if you're interested in the valve, you can download it just scan the QR code that you see right there. It takes you right to bimitup.com where you can download it. There's a lot to cover, so let's get right to it. All right, so let's go to Family, New. We're going to type ME for Mechanical Equipment, and then just Open. And before doing anything else, let's check our specification sheet PDF. We're trying to make this three-way sanitary valve. So we're going to keep it simple. We're going to focus on the body, the end caps, and the stem and the handle and maybe this cylindrical parts here they're not really cylinders but you know what i mean so let's go down to our dimensions and here you can see on this horizontal section is a plan view section you see our body here in blue we see those end caps in green you see the flanges in purple and then that quasi cylindrical solid in between and these are the reference planes that I thought about. And that's why I don't want to make it too complicated because it can really become overwhelming with how many reference planes you need. So let's try to keep it simple. You can see that this pattern is repeated in three directions, right? To the left, to the front, to the right. And if it were to be a four wave out, you would have the same thing to the back. Now we have this reference plane for the body, this reference plane for the end cap, this reference plane for the beginning of the flange and this reference plane for the end of the flange. Then you have the same thing towards the front and the same thing towards the right. Uh, important dimensions that I see here, we have J, which is the distance from the end of the flange to the center line of the valve, that's J. We have G, which is the distance from the center of the valve to the edge of the handle. We have H, which is the height to the top of the handle. We're going to disregard this and we're going to assume that the stem goes all the way up and then the handle is on the same plane, just to keep it simple. If you want to go a little fancier, you're welcome to do it, but we won't do it in this video. Uh, then uh, we're going to also consider the diameter, right? Diameter A and the external flange diameter, I. B will be the distance of the body. That will be this distance here from here to here. And uh, what else? And we have C, which is the distance from flange to flange. So, um, all right, let's do it. I'm going to take this to my other screen. I'm going to start creating some reference planes. So for that, I do right click, create similar. And I'm going to place one here. And just so you know what the intention is, I'm going to start with the two inch one with this highlighted dimensions. And then we'll create the other types and we'll just plug in the numbers. So let's just do something in the middle. So that distance from here to here is going to be half of C, right? And, and C, I know from here, is 215.9. So what I'll do is I'll create another one here. So I have two reference planes. Then I'll dimension from here to here to here. I'm going to make that equal. And then from here to here, and I'm going to call this B body. It's going to be a type, as dimension. That's fine. Let's go OK. And then I'm going to go here to parameters, and I'm going to set my body to that distance, 215.9. And this was in millimeters, so Revit's smart enough to know that when I click apply, that's eight and a half inches. So that's looking good. Let's change our scale a little bit. This is going to get too crowded. So I think this is better. Let's name our planes. This is important. So this one is center, front, back. That's good. This one we can call body, right. This one we can call body, left. And now we can create similar from here to here and from here to here. And then we dimension. We know that from here to here to here has to be equal, and that from here to here, it's going to be, let's be consistent with this. So we assign 
to this distance the parameter b body which is eight and a half so we're looking good now let's go to the front view and in reality that height is not really the same as the width but it's pretty close to a cube so let's just assume it that it is so i'm going to do create similar notice that if you hover over this you're selecting the actual reference level that's not what we want we want to select the line behind because that's the reference plane so create similar and then it's one of the bottom one of the top then we name this plane body top and this plane body bottom so let's dimension now from here to here to here and I'm going to make that equal and then from here to here that's going to be the same parameter body and the front let me go back to my reference level because this doesn't have a name and I want it to be body front and this one I want it to be body back let's first create other reference plane so going back to our diagram so that we don't get lost we have created this four planes already now we want to do the reference plane for the end caps so create similar I'm gonna do them a little bit smaller so that I don't get lost right so um, this is one right here then I'm gonna have another one right here to keep the command active and then I have another one here then we can give a certain dimension from here you always dimension from strong to weak or from fixed to variable and then let's define a new parameter called cap thickness we can keep as a type parameter okay and let's give to that cap thickness a certain dimension I'm gonna give it one inch for now and we'll see what happens that looks good and then we do the same thing from this phase to this phase and we assign to this one cap thickness and then we do the same thing for this one from here to here check click on it and assign cap thickness that's pretty good and then finally this one from here to here and that was already one inch but we don't want it just to be one inch we want it to be the cap thickness it's going to be the same size but we want it anchored to that parameter so that if we ever change that cap thickness parameter this thickness will change with it okay looking good so far i think i'm going to push it a little bit more so that it looks better uh now that we have this four planes this one this one this one and this one we're going to go after this two planes here those are going to be flange one and flange two flange one and flange two okay so let's see i'm going to do create similar and then i'm going to have one here and another one here and then one here and another one here right and now this plane uh, let's make sure we yeah we don't have names for this so this is going to be cap right this one here is going to be cap back this one here is going to be cap front and this one here is going to be cap left and now this one here is going to be flange right one and then this one's going to be you guess it flange right two and then this one is going to be flange left one flange left two and now we need the ones at the bottom so create similar and from here to here and from here to here and then this one is flange front one 
and flange front two. And then it seems like we, we don't have a distance for this piece anywhere, or at least I cannot see it. So you would have to play a little bit, you know, with it would be like C minus B minus the cap thickness. So I don't like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this dimension C to drive the whole show. And then we just do a flange thickness. Let's see how that works. So, so let's dimension from here to here to here. And we know that that has to be equal. And then from here to here is going to be that distance C, right? So let's define a new parameter, and that's C. And I'm going to call it valve length. And for the 2 inch, that parameter, valve length, and then that distance C is 215.9 is millimeters. So 215.9 millimeters. Apply. No, oh, there's something iffy here. I can see that they're both eight and a half inches. Uh, that doesn't make sense. So let me do undo and let's see what was going on. Yeah, let me bring this back down a little bit because because it got lost. And this is the B. This is B, the body. So that cannot be the same as C. What happened here? This was 120. See, so this value here, B, 120.3. That's the valve body itself, the, the cube. So let me change that first. And I know that that has to be 120.3, 120.3 millimeters. Uh, that's more like it. See, smaller, a lot smaller. And then now we can change the valve length to that value, which was 215.9 millimeters. Now it's looking a lot better. And we click OK. Looking good. Now let me let me clean this a little bit because uh, if not, we're going to get confused. So we know these two are equal. We know this body. We can take this, take it out. We can take this, take it out. This, take it out. And this and take it out. Now we have this two being equal. And yeah, this is what's creating confusion. So this here is flange left one. So when we define those planes, we said that this was going to be flange one left and this was going to be flange two, right? The same way here, flange one and flange two. So one is closer to the center and two is to the outside. So this guy should actually be to the right of this one. And the same thing with this one, because this one is right one, and this one was right two. So let me take this to the left of that one. And this one has not been dimensioned yet, but I know that this flange front one has to be closer than this one, which is flange from two, right? And then what I'm going to do is I know that from the center line, let me bring this here so you can see. I know that this distance from here to here is J. Now J in theory, J should be half of C, right? Because C is the distance from here to here, which is from here to here. And then if these are all the same dimensions, this should be half. So let, let's check that because that's a little bit confusing. So C and J. Let's see. If I take 107.95 and I multiply that by 2, I get 215.9. So yeah, that's that's fine. So we can use uh, 107.95. This, this value J is always going to be C divided by 2. So let's define a new parameter, 
right? And new parameter. And let's call it J. And we know that J is half C. And uh, there's going to be a type parameter. That's fine. And we can define now that as a formula. And that formula can be, and I'm doing control C, so I don't have any misspellings here. And there you go. It's half of this, right? So that's good. And now what we do is we can dimension from the center line to, but before doing that, let's change the cap thickness. I'm going to give it half inch to make it a little bit simpler on myself and then we'll play with it. So let's say half inch. And now we know that from here, center line to the end is J, right? So I click on it. I associate J to it. Looking good. Hey, for now, we just have the skeleton. All right, so what we can do here is um, we have all our dimensions. 